If it was possible to take out my human heart and hand it over, I would give it to the great Billy Porter. Please say hello. I know I can't touch it. We I can't know, touch it. I, I hate it. I hate it too. <laughs> um, Lee Harris and I picked out this outfit in we honor have on the same shoes of too. you. I know, by the way. Warrior on the back, Ruthie Davis. Come on. Oh, those Come are on here. amazing. Ah. Your dear friend Christian Siriano is here. I'm going to see him tomorrow. I think the outfit that the two of you created might be one of the most historic fashion moments oh. in modern history. Thank it's you. true. I mean, I, Thank there has you. never been I anything like that. it. It was the most original, outside the box thinking, and yet it looked like it had always been there. It was one of those aha moments if I've ever seen one. Well, you know, what's interesting about that for me is that being in drama school with all my friends and stuff, you know, we would like talk about it. Oh, I'm gonna wear a gown to the Oscars. I don't understand why men only get to wear the, you know, wear suits, the penguin suit, blah, 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 blah. And you know, it's rooted in this masculinity thing. You know, masculinity being the top of the food chain. And as a man, as a black man, particularly if you can't inhabit masculinity in the way that society expects you to or requires you to, it's a problem. And so I find that there are many men who on the red carpet would play, mm -hmm. you know, would have fun if it weren't for the masculinity gotcha gotcha. Mm -hmm. So I plucked myself out of that game. I know what it's like to be pigeonholed as a certain thing. When yeah. I was like a child actor, yeah. then I was a bad girl. Yeah. And you have well, broken through every stereotype or every narrative that you thought might be a, a trapping and created your own world, let alone a novel. <laughs> well, you know, I have to say, I'm so grateful for the time. You know, I think we, um, in our culture specifically, everything's a rush. You know, we're in this microwave life. More and more. We're in this more quick, faster, ADD. it has to happen. Convenient. And I took myself out of it needed to happen by such a certain date. And living in that space was just like one foot in front of the other, leaning into my authenticity that everybody told me was gonna be my liability. Yep. And it was my liability for decades. You said something. Until it wasn't. That really was a, a very important thing for myself to hear who is all about self-improvement and I'm not very kind to myself as I'm going through it. No, I'm, I'm, I, I got you. I mean. I'm learning self-compassion myself. I've been working on it during quarantine. And I'm so. good for you and I'm so good with other people. Like, Always with other people. I would never treat anyone the way I treat myself. <laughs> Which is ridiculous. Which is nuts. Yeah. But you said there is a quote that you chose you. What was choosing you? What did that ultimately feel like? Because to me, it's not a self-congratulatory thing. It's a very brave thing. Hmm. Well, you know, I was in the valley. And I was in the valley for a long time. You know, I always say it's easy to be who you are when what you are is what's popular. My, who, I, who I am wow. was not popular. And I just said, you know what? This is what it is. This is my truth. And whatever comes of this is what's supposed to come of this. Uh, today is very special for us. And, you know, I was reading about how when you were in, like, the Vogue scene and, you know, I was Studio 54, we sort of had this bon vivant, like, wonderful cultural upbringing of living in expression mm -hmm. and people you know, their hearts are sort of like these shooting stars, very much like the set you're about to step on for our first inaugural Sing to a Flower. I love Sing to a Flower. Well, this idea is gifted to us by none other than um, Jimmy Fallon, who he's married to my business partner, Nancy Javonen oh. and Fallon of 25 years. We oh, do wow. flower films together. So we've made everything together. And he said, I have to gift you guys this idea because it turns out that if you sing to a flower, there is scientific evidence that it helps it grow. Mm. And it was only a seed of an idea, pun intended then, <laughs> but here we are 
with Billy Porter about to sing a song which I would love for you to tell us about Edelweiss. You know, it's a flower that blooms in the harshest of environments, you know, um, and it teaches us that we can and must flourish in the darkest of times. And I know that this is a really dark time for a lot of us. And, um, you know, this song is a, is a song of hope. It's a song of peace and of love. That's all we got right now. You know, that's all we can do is show up and make sure that we represent the change as individuals that we want to see as the collective. Well, between Jimmy Fallon's gift to us and his seed of an idea and what you met it with, with picking this song that lyrically is so apropos of this year and of this moment, I think your two ideas come together and it's like Candide, Voltaire, cultivate the garden. <laughs> let's, let's kick this off in the most extraordinary way that's so beyond our wildest dreams.